Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Hatchet from Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion by Cephala Fair Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to the second episode in this Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion series and today we are painting Hatchet. He's one of the characters that you can play as in this smaller, simplified version of Gloomhaven. Now in the previous episode in this series I painted the Red Guard, which is the character that my wife's going to be playing and in that video I focused mainly on how I used NMM to give a metallic look to the red armour. So I only showed little bits and pieces of how I painted everything else. I'm going to do a similar thing today because the main focus of this video is how I build up the worn, tarnished, distressed, whatever word you want to use, leather look for the upper part of his cloak, so the part that goes over his shoulder and down his back. So most of the time in this video will be spent showing how I build that effect up and so I'll just show little bits and pieces of how I painted everything else so that you can see the colours and techniques that I use just enough so that you can get an idea but yeah the vast majority of the time in this video will be spent on that leather tarnished look that I get for that upper part of his cloak. So the early part of this video is me just going through and base coating all of the different parts of Hatchet. So I'll leave you to watch that and then I'll come back in once I start painting that distressed, worn, tarnished leather look for the upper part of his cloak.
Alright, so here is, I guess, where I start the damage leather look. And I say, I guess, because I'm not actually building up any texture here. All I'm doing here is just mixing in some leather brown into the ruddy leather. And the ruddy leather was the base coat colour for Hatchet's Cloak. Just to block in some basic highlights. And each layer I'll just gradually mix in more and more of the leather brown to lighten it off until I've got enough contrast between where the highlights are and where the shadows are. And the reason that I'm just blocking these highlights in is because one of the steps in building up the damaged leather look is to use some different colored washes to get some tonal variation. And so I'm just building up this contrast here more where the light would be hitting rather than where the shadows would be just so that when those washes do go down later on these brighter areas will come through and it will just suggest some basic highlighting. But because those washes will be going down I'm not worrying about blending at all because those washes will smooth everything out. But yeah that's all I'm doing at the moment. Just creating some lighter areas so that when the washes go down there'll be the suggestion of some basic highlighting. Alright, so here I'm starting this worn leather look that I want to go for for his upper part of his cloak to show that he's been through some battles and it's copped a bit of damage. So I'm starting with my skeleton bone, which is my lightest bone colour. It's not quite white, but it's just an off-white. And you can see I'm just doing some dots and different length lines around the edges and the raised parts, just to start to give the effect of some scuffing and some scratch marks. So I'm doing this because if we have a look at these different pictures here of some worn leather, you can see that it's scuffs over time, and where those scuffs and scratch marks and cracks are, it has a lighter tone there. You can see that, that stands out a little bit more to the rest of it, and there's also some tonal variation. It's not all of the exact same brown. So the reason why I'm starting with this light bone colour to do these dots and lines to give the effect of scuff marks and scratchings is because the next step will be to come in with some different coloured washes to give that tonal variation so that it's not all the same brown. I'll be using a brown, yellow, red and green wash. And not only will those washes tint the brown different colours to, you know, because it was originally a skin, it will also dull these dots and lines down to make them look a bit aged. And then I'm just going to keep repeating that process. So then I'll come back to the bone colour, do more of these dots and lines, and then go over it with another layer of the washes. And I'll repeat that three or four times, I think, by the time it's finished. And what that does is every single time that layer of wash goes down is that it further hides all of these dots and lines that have gone down before it. So by the time that I'm done, this initial layer of all of these scratches and scuff marks will be barely visible. But every layer of dots and lines that I do later on will be slightly reduced so that by the time we're totally finished, there'll be different degrees of aging for these scratch and scuff marks. And then the final layer will be to do one last very, very small area of the bone colour just to make it look like there are some fresh scuff marks. And so you can see now we're going on to adding the washes. So yeah, it's a brown, sorry, a sepia yellow, red, and green. So these are there's no rhyme or reason to where these end up. They just go down in different areas, and I put them all down wet so that I can blend them together. And, you know, so originally this was a skin, so it's not all the same tone, and this is just to get some natural variation. And, yeah, so it's just plop it down. You can see I did a big, big blob of green there, so I go back and just uh, wash the bristles off so that I can spread this around nice and thin. And, yeah, there's no plan to this. There's no like, oh, I'll put some green here and some red there. It's just put it down. Just look to see where I need to add it just to get some good variation. 
So this was really, really fun to do. So it's just spreading it around, making sure I blend them together. And you can see the way that it's covering up all of those uh, dots and lines that I did with the bone color previously for all those scratch and scuff marks. And this will just start to age them and make them look as though they're, they're not fresh. So yeah, I just go through, cover the area, try and get a good mix of those four different colors so that there isn't too big of an area of one color. What I did find was that yellow was a really, really good color for this. For whatever reason, it just went over the ruddy leather paint that I used for the base coat really, really nicely. So I did kind of lean towards the yellow quite a bit. Um, and red was also really good, which you can see that I've blended in there. I used green sparingly because I figure it probably wouldn't appear as much in a leather color um, and the sepia I kind of kept more I suppose to where the shadow colors would be but yeah just just a nice spread of each of them so that there isn't too much of one color Alright, so now we're on to the second layer, and I gave all of those washes a really good bit of time to dry so that the paint wouldn't mix with it. But I'm just going back with the bone colour, and I'm just redoing all of these dots and lines for the scratch and scuff marks. So you can see I'm just trying to keep it as much as possible to the edges and the raised areas, the parts that are most likely to knock up against things, or to, you know, get a sword mark or something like that. And when I'm doing this, I'm keeping it to the same areas as the first layer, but I'm just trying to reduce the area slightly so that when the next layer of washes go over, you'll still be able to see that first layer, but it will start to really get covered up now. And then this layer will be slightly more visible. One thing that I did think as I was doing some later layers of this is that the initial layer of these dots and lines for the scratch marks would have been better to have covered a larger area because as I'm reducing every, or trying to reduce the area every time to show some of that previous layer, that first layer, most of it does get covered up by the end because there are three or four layers of this and it is barely seen in terms of how much it's covered up by the washes. So it would have been good to have spread it further, done a, covered a lot more of the ruddy leather with it so that by the end, you would have been able to more clearly see the different agings of these lines. So you, you can only really see the initial layer if you kind of look at it up close because there is only such a small amount of it still showing by the time I've done all of the other layers after it. I'm still really, really happy with the look. I was, was really, really happy with how it ends up, but that was just one thing that I thought. So if I was to do this again, I would definitely cover more area with the dots and lines for the initial layer so that as I then reduce and reduce and reduce, it doesn't end up pretty much completely covering that first layer. So you can see I've, I went back and did that second layer of the washes there. I didn't try and match, like put the red wash over where I'd previously put the red wash or the sepia tone over where I'd put the, previously put the sepia tone. It was just again a random mixing of colors. So this is a really, really organic kind of technique, I suppose. So, you know, as the red goes over some yellow, which had gone over the ruddy leather, you end up with some really, really interesting tones and you don't end up with like a really strong red or a really strong yellow because these tones start to mix together. And now we're on to doing the third layer of the dots and lines for all of these scratch marks and you can see how much smaller the area is that I'm covering now than the first layer. So by the time the wash goes over this, you'll have the initial layer of these dots and lines will be barely visible. Then the second layer will be a bit more visible than that and then the third layer will be even more visible than that. So you'll really start to get the effect of the aging of this leather and that some of the scratch marks and scuffs are more recent than others. So now again, third layer of the washes. Like I said earlier, I'm not trying to match the color that I'm putting down now with the previous color that was put down. I'm also not trying to deliberately do different colors. It's just randomly grabbing the sepia, yellow, red, and green, and just putting them down and mixing them together. And that just gives a really organic mix of all of these tones, which is sort of going to more accurately 
represent the actual color of aged leather rather than trying to do it deliberately because they're in nature there is no rhyme or reason to to where all of these colors end up and so i'm trying to have it as organic and random i suppose as possible so now we're on to the fourth layer of the bone color, and this is the final layer, so I don't put any wash over the top of this. So you can see I'm now being quite deliberate and careful with where I'm putting it down. Because this is the final layer, I want this to look as though this is the fresh or the most freshest scuff and scratch marks. And so I'm just putting these down right carefully around the edge and over the most raised area, but I'm being very, very careful careful to only cover up a small amount of area with this so that all of those previous layers can be seen so that the aging of it really really shows through because as this guy is in the middle of the table I want this effect to be seen from that distance so yeah I don't, I don't want to cover too much so that you can see all of those different degrees of aging so that the four layers of the bone color will be coming through to very different degrees and these areas will look like just the most recent scratchings and so it will only be a very very small area One extra quick thing to note is that I do have a bit of water mixed in with the bone colour. Now, Reaper paints out of the bottle are already pretty thin, but I do have some water in it so that it flows off the brush really, really easily. Because I'm trying to keep all of these dots and lines very, very thin, I need it to be able to flow off the very, very tip of the brush really easily. And so adding that extra bit of water really, really helps with that. So there we go. There's the, the final distressed leather look. And I was really, really happy with how this came up. I had a picture in my head and I had it worked out how I wanted to go about it and I was really really happy that it was able to work but yeah like I said the main thing that I would change going forward is just that initial layer of the bone color for all those dots and lines I would cover a much much greater area with them because first of all by the time three or four layers of washes have gone over the top it is barely visible but also by the time a bunch of other layers of the bone color those dots and scratches have gone over the top that covers most of that initial layer as well and so it does become quite hard to see but covering a larger area with that initial bone color would allow more of that to be seen and I think that aged look that I was going for would have been more easy to see especially when a hatchet is in the middle of the table being seen from the distance of, every, of everyone sitting around the edge. So you can see here I'm doing the highlighting and shading on this other leather part that Hatchet is wearing, this kind of cloak that sits underneath. And this was actually a bit of a key point because I wanted these two different leather areas to read quite differently. Like, you know, obviously I showed I wanted that top part to look quite distressed and worn and damaged, whereas this part is a bit more protected, it won't have copped the same damage as that upper part. So I'm just using normal highlighting and shading techniques here just through layering and feathering out the edges to get nice smooth blends to make this seem like a smoother less damaged leather than the upper part I also used very different colors to base coat with so I used the ruddy leather for the upper part which is a brown that has by the looks of it some red mixed in and then the part that you're watching me highlight at the moment I used earth brown as the base coat for that which is a flat brown and then I'm just mixing in uh, the leather brown as the highlighting so that it does give a definite leather tone to it but it's very very different to the upper part of his cloak and by not doing any of those dots and lines for the scratch and scuff marks they do read quite differently so I was really really happy that I was able to get this part and his boots still looking like leather but a very 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 different leather to the upper part so that when Hatchet is in the middle of the table being seen from the distance of everyone sitting around the edge it's clear that there are two different types of leather that he's wearing. Alright, so except for the quiver that's on his back, this is all of the leather parts taken care of. For the quiver, I do do some basic 
scratch marks for that, but it's all in pretty much the same way that I did for the main part of his cloak, so I won't talk through that. But for the rest of Hatchet, it's just basic highlighting and shading for all of the other different parts. So the green part of his pants that's showing through, his skin, those sorts of areas, and then I just do some basic wet blending for his horns coming out the top of his head, just so that there's a nice blend from uh, black through to a light grey. So I'm just going to leave you to watch the rest of this. It's all things that I've talked about before there's nothing new here but yeah just basic layering up to get some highlights and shadows so i'll come back in at the end just to close the video out so i hope you enjoy watching the rest of how i painted hatchet
All right, so just as these last couple of bits get done on the base, Hatchet is finished. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you got something out of it that you can use in your own painting, especially that distressed leather look. I had lots of fun painting that. It was a really sort of free, organic process. There was no real amount of thought behind it. I mean, the steps that go into it were planned, but in terms of where every little scratch or each wash tone went it was just sort of made up as I was going along and I was really really happy with how it looked in the end so hopefully you enjoyed watching that please do give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and stop by the Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel as well especially if you've got something out of one of my videos and used in your own painting whether you've copied a color scheme or a technique or just straight up copied how I've painted a mini I'd love it if you could post some pictures tag me in it some of you have done that before and I love seeing how you guys are using my videos but until next time this is Matt from the plastic canvas signing out happy painting everyone cheers